Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Solution here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 2 on the Jan 2008 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so they start off by telling us that on July 1, 2007, Owen Dick, a plumber, had the following balances on his books of accounts. So they give us these balances here. So they have Capital, 25,730. Bank, 181. Roger George, 7,370. So that means that Roger George, this is a credit column, right? They didn't label it debit and credit, but it's a credit column. So we, we owe Roger George money. That's a liability, right? And then plumbing tools, well, that's an asset, right? Bank and tools are assets, so that they need debit column. Now, it tells us down here that his bookkeeper tried to prepare the following books of original entry for the month of July 07, but fell ill before completing them. Okay, let's take a look at the books. Okay, so we have a few things. We have first a general journal, and the general journal says debit to pick up van, and the credit, which is, well, the debit wasn't supposed to be indented, or the credit was supposed to be indented, right? So debit to pickup van and a credit to working man's motors means that we bought this pickup van on credit from working man's motors. Okay. Next item up, I'm seeing a purchases journal. So purchases journals record only credit purchases of stock. So it looks like we bought more stock on credit from Roger George. Next item up, I'm seeing Irwin Dick returns outward journal. So we return some goods to Roger George. Okay. Next, I'm seeing a cash book. Okay. So we have some items on the debit side. We have the same 18,100, which was the balance given to us a bit higher up. Sale of a plumbing tool, $6,000. Hmm. Plumbing fees, so this is revenue. Plumbing fees is revenue, 21,230, okay? Uh, on the next side now, what we have? We have, okay, Roger George. So we, we paid Roger George and we receive a discount, okay? Miscellaneous expenses, seven nine fifty drawings, four thousand, and a balance carried on twenty six thousand and eighty. Okay, what do they want us to do? So it says to open the general ledger accounts for all accounts on record at the beginning of the month except bank. Now they said general ledger accounts, yeah, so that you have to be careful with that. Next, they say post the information from the above journals to the ledger, opening new accounts when necessary. Okay. And then they say, balance and close all accounts. All right. Okay, so that's a full 20 marks there. So we have some double entry work to do. So I know some of you all are a little shaky with double entry. So let's go through this bit by bit, piece by piece. And I suggest you take some notes. You write on any questions you have and you send them to me in the comment section below because the only way to get better at something is to keep trying and to ask questions when you don't understand. And of course, to get the answers to those questions. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to open the books, the accounts, sorry, in the general ledger. Now, the general ledger has the accounts of assets, liabilities, uh, capital, revenues, expenses, but those things won't be, some, those last two things won't be there at start. So we have the capital, we have two assets. Now, Roger George is a creditor, so Roger George's account would not be in the general ledger. Roger George's account would be in the purchases ledger or the creditors ledger. But I'm going to open an accounts payable account for him any way you take it because there are some transactions for Roger George and for the purposes of facilitating the, the visual the visualizations of double entry, I want to have Roger George's account here. So the thing is, the workaround is you could have simply put like a, like a summary creditors account or a creditors control account because that would appear in general ledger. So yeah, long story short, remember, General ledger doesn't have creditors, individual accounts, but we're going to put it any way to, just for the sake of illustration. Okay, so the capital account, capital has a credit balance. So let's look at the capital account here. So we're going to put a balance brought down on the credit side, 25,730. Next, we have bank 18,100. Bank is an asset. Assets have debit balances. So we're going to put that there. Next, we have Roger George. So remember we said Roger George is a creditor and as such, his account would be in the purchases ledger and not the general ledger. But again, for the sake of illustration, I'm going to open his account. Now, I label it accounts payable Roger George, but you could label it like a creditor's control account or a summary creditor's account or a total creditor's account because that would appear in the general ledger because it, a creditor's is a liability. Eh? So we have to put that account there. So 
Roger George is a creditor, that's a liability that's going to have a credit balance at start. Okay. And the last item is plumbing tools. Plumbing tools is an asset and will have a debit balance at start. So we're going to see that, hey, balance brought down 15,000. Okay, the next thing they want us to do is to post the information from the above journals to the ledger, opening new accounts when necessary. So let me pull up the journals and we'll start populating these accounts with some of this information. Okay, so I'm seeing it says Irwin Dick General Journal. So this is, we have a debit to pick up van, which is an asset. So that means the asset is increasing because you're debiting the asset. And working man's motors, you're crediting. So that means that's a liability because you're crediting them. At least in the context here, you're buying an asset you're debiting because it's increasing. But instead of paying, instead of seeing cash or bank to mean money went out, we're seeing working man's motors limited, which implies we bought it on credit from that entity. And hence we owe that entity money. So they are now a creditor for motor van. Okay, let's deal with the asset first. So pickup van increase. So pickup van is an asset. If an asset is increasing, you're going to debit the asset account. Now, a lot of people message to say, sir, but your credit you debited working man's motors. No, 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 no. This is an entry on the debit side, yes, but it's on the debit side of the pickup van account. The details tell us the other account affected by the transaction. This entry here tells us that we bought a motor or, or pickup van, sorry, increased by 23,000. And this tells us if we paid cash or check for it or if we bought it on credit and who and from whom we bought it on credit. And of course, when that happened. So again, this is not a debit to working man's motors. This is a debit to pickup van. Similarly, on the other side here, you're seeing creditor for pickup van, working man's motors. This is a liability account. It's going to increase, which will require an entry on the credit side. So here you're seeing a credit entry for 23,000. Pickup van is what we bought on credit from working man's motors limited. And this is when we bought it on credit. So again, this is not a credit to pickup van, okay? Next, all right, let's take a look at the next set of stuff. Okay, so we're seeing a purchases journal, July the 5th, Roger George, 1330. So the purchases journal records credit purchases of stock only. So we bought stock on credit from Roger George for 1330. So we're going to need the purchases account because the purchases account records all purchases of stock, regardless of if it's cash or credit. And it's an expense. So when we incur the expense, we are going to debit the expense account. So you're going to enter on the debit side of purchases, 1330. You're going to put Roger George as the details because we bought it on credit from Roger George and the date. So again, this is not a credit. This is not a debit to Roger George. This is a debit to purchases. In Roger George's account, you're going to go on the credit side and enter the same amount, 1330. We're going to put purchases as the details and we're going to put the same date as any other account. So again, this is not a credit to purchases. We are entering, we are putting an entry on the credit side of Roger George's account to show that we purchased on credit from Roger George, 1,330 worth of goods. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, we're gonna see the returns outwards journal, which of course records returns outwards of stock. Okay, so we see we return some stock to Roger George. Now, if we return some stock to Roger George, it means that we don't have to pay for that stock, which means our liability, the amount we owe Roger, is going down. And to record a decrease in a liability, we have to debit the liability account. So we're going to go back in Roger George's account, and we're going to put an entry on the debit side that says returns outwards. Now, you might be wondering why I have some space here. Well, that's because, well, I cut out because I forgot I had other entries there. So I'll cut that out, but I'll talk you through the other entry shortly. So the returns outward goes on the debit side of Roger George's account because it's decreasing the liability. If you send back goods, you no longer have to pay for them. Hence, the liability is going down. Now, of course, every debit needs a corresponding credit. What account is credited? Well, returns outwards. So we're going to go in the returns outwards account and we're going to put a credit entry, right? An entry on the credit side for 200 saying Roger George. So we return 200 worth of goods to Roger George on the 10th of July. Right? So sometimes it actually is easier to read the information in the T-accounts going right to left as opposed to left to right. right? Returns outwards of 200 to Roger George on the 10th of July. Okay, All right. Let's take a look at the cash book now. So in the cash book, we have a couple of receipts. Right, We have um, sale of plumbing tool. Okay, Now, that one I had an issue with because when you sell the plumbing tool, 
We don't know if that's the, 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 the network value of the plumbing too. They had a whole topic called, a subtopic called disposals of fixed assets, non-current assets, that they took off the syllabus back in the middle, the mid 2000s, right? So you all aren't expected to know about it, but because I know some of the nuances there, that, that piece gives me trouble in terms of agreeing with how they wanted to treat it because it's not the correct treatment. But anyhow, before I go on, I will rant on that. And then plumbing fees is also revenue. So we have, we have two accounts to open there on the credit side. So look, hold on. We have a Roger George item here. You know what? Let's go to Roger George's account and enter that stuff now. Right? So we're down in Roger's account. Now it says that we paid Roger 7300 and we have discount received at 70. So we actually have three accounts affected by this transaction. Roger, bank, because this is in the bank column of the cash book, and discount received. So Roger will be debited for two amounts, the 7300 and the 70. Basically, we're paying off the amount that we owe Roger at start. And when you pay off an amount of a liability, the liability is going down, which means the liability is decreasing, which needs, sorry, which will be recorded as a debit in the liability account, both for the amount paid via, via a check from the bank and via discount received, right? That's 7370 in total, which matches here. So we've paid off the amount owed at start. Now, the corresponding, sorry, the corresponding credit to this debit will be seen in the bank account on the this side, right? So you see it on the credit side. We paid 7300 to Roger George on the 2nd of July. So this credit, this debt credit entry here matches with this debit entry across here. Now we have the discount received account to pull. Let me pull that one up. Just give me one sec. Right, so there you go. So this is a debit to Roger George. $70 for discount received. So in the discount received account, we're going to credit that account for $70 that we got from Roger George on the 2nd of July. Right. So this credit entry here matches with this debit entry here. So again, that's why your trial balance must balance because every debit needs a corresponding credit. Okay, let's take a look at what, whatever's next. Okay, so while we're on the credit side of the cash book, we're seeing miscellaneous expenses. So that's a payment, right? So we're just going to take the same $79.50 and put it on the credit side of bank because again, when you make a payment, your money is going down. Bank is an asset. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So we paid $79.50 for miscellaneous expenses on the 16th of July. And every credit, right? Because this is a credit to bank, not a credit to miscellaneous expenses. Every credit needs a corresponding debit. What account are we going to debit? Well, miscellaneous expense. That is what we paid. So we're going to see an entry on the debit side of miscellaneous expenses here, right? So we paid miscellaneous expenses. We paid $79.50 from bank with a check on the 16th. So this debit, right? Sorry, this, this debit here, right? Corresponds with this credit across here. All right, nicely. What's the next item in the cash book we're seeing there? So we're seeing drawings. So drawings is when the owner takes any resource for his or her own personal use. And of course, that means the resource of bank is decreasing. So we're going to put it on the credit side of the bank account, right? So it's the same entry. 4,000 was taken out for drawings on the 30th of July. And of course, every credit needs a corresponding debit. The debit will go to drawings. Drawings represents a decrease in capital and capital decreases with a debit. So we are going to put that debit here in the drawings account. So we took out 4,000 from the bank on the 30th of July. Okay, let's take a look at the items on the debit side of the cash book before we forget those. <laughs> okay, so on the 14th, we have the sale of a plumbing tool. Again, this is not supposed to be as straightforward as I believe they wanted to do it, but because you don't know, have to know, you don't have to know, and this, the people sitting this exam didn't have to know about disposals, we don't have to worry about all that. Okay, so if we sold an asset, the asset is decreasing. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So in the plumbing tools account, we're just going to put 6,000, right? So we sold plumbing tools for 6,000 collected money in the bank account, right? And in the bank account, of course, we're just going to put the debit on the, well, the item, that entry in the debit side. So this debit will correspond with this credit across here. Okay, lovely. And we have one more item inside of the cash book. Let's take a look, right? So on the 23rd, we, we received plumbing fees by check, 21,230. So we're going to put that on the debit side here, just to kind of match with the information given to us already in the cash book. And plumbing fees is a revenue. When you earn a revenue, you credit the revenue account. And you're going to see that here, right? So we earned 21,230, or at least we collected 21,230 via check on the 23rd. So this credit here matches with this debit across here, right? Now, the last thing we have to do is balance and close all accounts. Okay, so just give me one sec. Let's start at the top and go down. Okay, so let's start with the capital account. Now, 
Anytime you have an account with one entry inside of it, it's very easy to balance. All we need to do is put a balance carry down on, on the opposite side for the same amount. So that's going to look like this. And when we total up both sides now, the total, of course, will be the same and the balance will be carried down on the credit side here because it is capital and capital has a credit balance. Okay. Now, what about the bank account, right? So the bank account, now we kind of have the balance already because we have the cash book. So we know what it's supposed to look like. But again, just an exercise in balancing off, right? So think about it like money coming in because that's the debit side of the assets account and that would cause the increases, money coming in and also the money I had at start, right? So you had 18, one at start and 27, two thirds, they came in. Cool. And on this side, you have your payments, money going out. So you're going to add up the amount of money you had subtract what you spent and that's going to give you the balance how much is remaining right so that's going to be 26 or 80 and of course when you total up both sides now your account will, will be in balance right the totals will be the same on both sides okay all right so let's continue let's continue with all the items with debit balances right so plumbing tools is next so we started off at 15,000 worth of plumbing tools we sold 6,000 worth so we're going to be left with 9,000 worth right so 15 minus 6 is 9. So of course the um, sorry the totals will be the same, and you're gonna bring the balance down on the debit side. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, there you go. Right, yeah. Bring the balance down on the debit side. So the balance carried down from one side is brought down on the opposite side, and of course because it's an asset, it's supposed to have a debit balance. Okay. Next, pickup van. So we bought twenty three thousand. We bought a pickup van for twenty three thousand. And that's the balance in the account. That's exactly how much it's worth and how much we paid for it. And we're going to carry the balance down from here and bring it down here. Okay, next we have the put. Now, purchases is an expense. Expenses have debit balances. And again, we only have one entry in the account. So to balance it off, we just have to put a balance carry down on the opposite side for the same amount. The totals now on both sides will be the same and you bring your balance down on the debit side. Similarly, miscellaneous expenses is also an expense with one entry in it. So to balance off the account, just put balance carried down for the same amount on the opposite side, total both sides, and then bring the balance down. And finally, drawings. So neither expense nor asset, it's a, it's a reduction in capital. It's a debit item with one entry on the debit side. So you're simply going to put balance carried down on the credit side for the same amount, total it up. It's going to be equal on both sides and bring your balance down. Okay, great. Let's head across to the items with credit balances now. So we did capital already. Now, Roger George, right? So we and we started off owing Roger 7370. We paid that off and then we bought 1330 more and sent back 200. So the 7370 is cancelled off already. And we only have to take into consideration really the 1330 and the 200. So we bought 1330, we sent back 200, which means we only owe now 1130. Right? Or again, you could add up everything on this side, add up everything here, and subtract. And you put the difference on the side with the lower... Like, oh, I think I have the wrong date here. Sorry, one second. Right, that's a little better. <laughs> okay, so of course now the totals will be the same on both sides, and you're going to bring your balance down on the credit side. Because Roger is a creditor, that's a liability, and liabilities usually have credit balances. Next, working man's motors. Okay, so one entry on the credit side, so to balance it off, Put balance carried on the debit side with the same amount. Total up both the debit and credit side there and bring your balance down on the credit side. And we're going to repeat for returns outwards. One entry on the credit side, balance carried down from the debit side. Total up both sides, bring your balance down. Plumbing fees, that's a revenue. Revenues have credit balances, but of course here it was one entry on the credit side. So your balance is carried down from the debit side with the same amount. Uh, one second, eh? Right, cool, yeah, and bring your balance down on the credit side. And this can receive also revenue, one entry on the credit side. So the balance is carried down from the debit side, totaling up both sides gives us the same total and bring your balance down. And that's it for this question. All right, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question two from the Jan 2008 PUA paper two. If you have any further questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to see any more videos, I'm gonna put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PUA handouts. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.